Hello guys, I'm back. Today I will talk to you about what are the minimum required information that you should add for the heat and material balance of your process flow diagram. My name is Jefferson Costa and I teach students, graduates and engineers how to work with chemical process engineering and plant design. Follow my profile and like this video to get the hundreds of content related to chemical process engineering and plant design. So, to start with, Let's verify what is a process flow diagram or PFD. In a few words, the process flow diagram is an engineering document developed to represent the heat and material balance of a process. In this document, you will have blocks, lines, information needed to understand what is happening with the process. So the process flow diagram can have the heat and material balance attached to the drawing, as you can see, from this example, from ISO PEM 628, to here in the top, we have the, a table with identification of the lines and also some information related to the process. And in the drawing itself, we have the representation of the equipments, the major equipments for the process, some instrumentations, and the identification of the streams that can be done using numbers, using letters, or a combination of numbers and letters. So here, what I would like to tell you is what could, should be the minimum information required to identify your heat and material balance. You can see here from this example that we have the flow rate, operant pressure, operant temperature, and density. But are these ones the, uh, enough for the understanding of a process. Here you can see an example of a heat and material balance that I developed from some of the projects that I work with. So here, instead of having the heat and material balance attached to the PFD drawing, I have a separate document, but the purpose is the same. Show to the person that is reading this document what is happening or what are the process conditions from the, for the process. And the PFD is used in two, for two different, uh, in two different ways. One is for the design of the plant, so the chemical process engineer will develop the process and add the information in, uh, in terms of objects in the process flow diagram and inform what are the process conditions of the process in order that the specification data sheets, the process data sheets can be developed and with that purchase install the plant, then do the plant erection. Once the project is finished, the process flow diagram will be used for operations. So the, this document will be the reference for the adjustment of the plant. Although we have the operating manual, the process flow diagram is the source of information for the adjustment of the plant. So based on that, in my point of view, you should add for the, your process flow diagram the information that is important for operations and information, uh, the minimum information that, uh, in a way that a chemical process engineer or a, a person that has the expertise to develop a heat and material balance is able to replicate what is shown in the process flow diagram. So based on that, I will start my process flow diagram, the heat and material balance of my process flow diagram with the molecular weight of the component. It is not uh, necessarily mandatory, but I, I like to add this information. What I believe that should be uh, shown in a process flow diagram as a minimum is the vapor fraction. Vapor fraction informs to the reader if a component, if a stream is a liquid, is a vapor, or a combination of liquid and vapor. And that's important because if the operator goes to a field and open a manual valve or any kind of uh, release uh, uh, done in the, in the field and he or she knows what kind of fluid is available there, it's better for the operations. And when we are doing the plan design, this is an important operations for the kind of characters that will be used for pipe sizing, 
If for liquid pipe sizing, we have a criteria for uh, gas or vapor pipe size, we have another criteria. So in my point of view, the vapor fraction is a minimal requirement to have in your uh, heat material balance of your process flow diagram. Another information that is very important and, the, and I, al I always add to my process and uh, my process most often is the processing of natural gas or industri industrial gases is the molar flow. And I believe that molar flow in normal cubic meters per hour or uh, equivalent information, a uh, volumetric information is important because the measurements of flow in your process will be based on flow. Uh, if uh, volumetric flow, even if it is gas or if it is liquid. So for gases, most often we use high standard volume flow that can be normal volume flow for zero Celsius degree or standard, uh, standard uh, volumetric flow that can be uh, a basis of 60 Fahrenheit, for instance. In any case, I like to use normal cubic meters per hour instead of kilomoles or moles per hour or moles per, per second because this is a information that the operator can see in the control room because the flow measurements for gas phase will be based on volumetric flow. This is the reason that I believe, my point of view, that molar flow is a important information for your for the heating material balance of your process flow diagram. Pressure is another information that be shown in the heating material balance because the operations must know what are the normal conditions for their process. So in, if they go to the field and they do the reading of a manometer there, they will find the manometric a manometric value of pressure and not the absolute pressure. So based on that, instead of adding the the uh, absolute pressure to my my heating material balance, I like to use the manometric pressure because again, as a document for operations adjustment and verification of performance, I prefer to add information that can be verified straight by the operations. So uh, if I need to do calculations in chemical process engineering in plant design, most often the calculations will be performed using the uh, absolute pressure, but that kind of information the chemical engineer knows. So what is important is that the reference for the atmospheric pressure or barometric pressure is also shared with the documentation. But for terms, in terms of operation, I don't want that the operator do calculations to verify, to think that he is reading uh, one thing in the field and they need to do calculation, mind calculations to understand what's happening. Another important and essential information for your heat and material balance of your process Process flow diagram is the temperature. All temperatures must be informed to operations in order that they can verify if everything is okay or not. And again, we'll have here a straight relationship between what the operators see in the control room and also see in the field. So the temperature that we use will be according to the temperature that will the, the measure the unit of measurement of your process or of your design. Another information that I believe that is important in the point of view of the development of the heating material balance is the mass flow because the volumetric flow depends on temperature and pressure and sometimes can, can, uh, can lead to some misunderstanding be, uh, among different players if someone is in Europe, the standard measurement can be different from people that are in the US, that is different from people that are in Asia or in South America and etc. But when we talk about mass flow, it doesn't matter where you are, where you are the understanding are the same. Another information that I add to my heating material balance, but not necessarily mandatory, 
is the mass density. And I like to add the mass density for the heat and material balance because with the mass flow and with the heat and material balance, it's easier to do a calculation to verify what is the actual volume flow of a fluid. And I like to add this information because if I am measuring a gas or a vapor, I, I will read that as normal cubic meter per hour, but it is a unit of measurement for gas bases. It do not represent a measurement for liquids. So as I have the mass flow and I have the mass density, I am able to do a quick calculation to verify what is the volumetric flow when I dealing with liquid streams. And that's why it's important to have the vapor fraction of my stream here because I can verify if it's a liquid with the mass density and the mass flow do the verification, the performance. This is uh, optional, optional, uh, I don't see as mandatory, but I encourage you, if you are uh, allowed to do that, to add the information that will be read by the operator. Again, if you have a process with some flow measurements for liquid, instead of using the normal cubic meters for all the flow measurements here in the flow, you can have a note representing that gas is normal cubic meter per hour, liquid is cubic meters per hour, for instance. The most important here is to let the life of the operations easier. The operator must read the process flow diagram and go to the field and understand that what is in the field is equal or not to the process flow diagram. And finally, we have the composition of your stream. This is important because without the composition of your stream, the chemical process engineer or anyone will be able to replicate what is happening in the process. So I prefer to use the mole fraction or the mole percentage because when we are talking about gases, the mole fraction will represent the volume fraction of the gas. And again, the analyzers for gas measurement in, in, the, in your process most often will give to you the information and volume fraction or volume percentage. And those information will be very close or will match with your heat and material balance in your process flow diagram. I don't use the mass fraction unless it is really necessary because I understand that it's not intuitive. We, we do not measure the flow in gas, in gas phase, in, in, of, in, in mass fraction. So just to give a correspondence between the field and also the engineering documentation, I prefer to use the mole fraction. So you will add the mole fraction from, for all components that participate in your process. So based on that, these are my suggestions to you as the minimum required information to be added to your heat and material balance in your process flow diagram. The properties of a fluid I do not add to the heat and material balance because I understand that if someone needs to do a calculation, rigorous calculation, or do calculations with this minimal information, it's possible to replicate the heat and material balance using uh, data banks or uh, process flow diagrams. And with that, the person responsible for doing these calculations will get all the properties needed in, in those sources. So for in the point of view of operations, they need to be able to read and adjust the plan not to perform calculations. Uh, not, it's not common to be to do the calculations to do the operation of the plan. They need to do adjustment. With this, we covered another topic in chemical process engineering and plan design. And if you want to know how to use process simulation software to perform the heat and material balance for your process, take a look in the next video that will appear to you right now. This is it guys, I hope you like it and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye bye.